so much for joining us. You guys started practice just uh, what a little bit ago. What's practice been like so far? A uh, bunch of scrimmaging, just a bunch of getting <laughs> up and down now. Uh, this summer we did a lot of skill development, just working on what we need to work on. And now it's finally here. We're just getting up and down, learning the plays, uh, learning our new teammates, and just having fun, soaking it in. You talk about development. Where did you want to make the biggest jump from last year to this year? Uh, I shot 38 from three, so if I can get it in the 40 range, I think I think that'll do me a lot of justice. And uh, I want to I add a couple logo threes inside my game. <laughs> So if I can do that, I think that would be the biggest for me. Gotcha. Well, we'll be on the lookout for some logo threes from long distance. Tom's going to uh, toss it to our media members who have some questions for you. Okay, uh, if you want to ask a question, please uh, raise your hand in the uh, chat using the chat feature, and uh, we'll get to uh, a question. All right, we'll go to uh, Stephen Peters first. Hey, Kendrick, how's it going, man? Hey, how you doing, Steve? I'm good, man. Appreciate it. Uh, so just talk about a little bit more of your team, um, how you're gelling with all the new components that you guys have added over the uh, with the transfer portal and the uh, freshmen coming in. Uh, I think we're gelling great. Uh, we got, I want to say, eight new guys. So just learning, learning each other's spots. Uh, hanging with each other off the floor, just learning what each other do well. I know for me, I had the same teammates two years in a row, so just learning, getting to know these group of guys been fun, and just learning what each player likes on the floor and off the floor has been the most exciting. Hey, Kendrick, uh, curious, kind of off the court, man. I, uh, I saw you got a merchandise collaboration with a company called Playmaker. Can you tell me about that a little bit? Uh, yeah, so um, I came out with a shirt. Uh, I collabed with them on some shirts um, called Beat the Arts. Uh, you know, obviously being small, you kind of got to, you kind of have a, a harder route than the bigger guys. So uh, we did a collab. We came together and did a collab and just uh, tried to give back to the community. Love that thought, Kendrick. Mike, Mike's looking for some merch deals himself. So if you got some Always. advice for him, he'll take it. I got um, I got, I got you. All right, all right. He's excited. You know, you're a player who really can do it all, you know, but you can't do it alone. And it sounds like you guys are really working hard to, like you said, find the tendencies and, and the chemistry with other guys. Who are you going to really count on to help contribute offensively? Uh, I think Zach Nuttall, who I think gave us like 37 in the season opener. I think, I'll, I think he'd be a big part of our scoring. Uh, also, Michael Weathers, who's very athletic, probably the most athletic guard I play with. And uh, Marcus, all our older guys, I think, are going to help score this year. M majority of the points, I think I'm, I'm ready to gel with them. Question will be from Dayon Dunlap of Apollo Houston. Hey, how's it going, Kendrick? Um, you just said something a second ago about being a, like a smaller guard. And you went through the process last year. Talk about the NBA process and what you heard back as far as better what you need to work on um, coming into another season at SMU. And did you hear any com co comparisons with Chris Paul? I think you have similarities between your game and size. Uh, yeah, so after talking to the NBA team, that's what everybody kept saying, Chris Paul. But uh, I, like, I like Dennis Schroeder, Kyle Lowry. All the little guys I watch, but yeah, for sure it was – Everybody kept saying Chris Paul because of pass first. Yeah, that's that's a that's a uh, comparison I get a lot. So yeah. Well, Kendrick, we're excited to watch you play this season. Thanks so much for hopping on. Appreciate y'all for having me. So my question about his skill level. I mean, they lose Tyson Jolly, Ferran Hunt, and they're still picked third in the preseason poll because of what he adds to this team, what is it that he adds? Well, no disrespect to the team, uh, the players that you just mentioned that left, but I think we've got a little attrition here in terms of offensive firepower and physicality. 
First, the offensive firepower standpoint, uh, Kendrick mentioned Zach Nadal. He was Southland Player of the Year at Sam Houston State, averaged 20 a game. Incredible ISO score. And when you have so much attention on Kendrick Davis, I mean, there's a chance that Zach Nadal could be one of the top scorers in the conference because of all the attention going to Kendrick Davis. And then we talked about physicality, something that SMU has been missing, and that's coming from the Weathers brothers, Marcus and Michael. Marcus was actually an all-conference a member in the Atlantic 10 at Duquesne, and he is a bruiser. Physical, rebounding, tough, gritty player around the rim, and Michael's a little bit more fluid offensively, but the Weathers brothers are really good, and they're going to come in and contribute right away. It's a positionless offense for SMU and Coach Jankovic. Every single player they brought in elevates their offense in a way that I think we haven't seen since 2014 when they went to the NCAA tournament. Five transfers coming in. For a coach, how hard is that to get this team to find its identity in such a short amount of time? You got Kendrick, so I don't think it's that hard because you kind of heard his priority is to gel this team, and he's excited about the other scores, the older guys, and I think that's one thing that helps too. It's not like you're transferring in young guys. You've got experienced players now on the team. But one thing I do think is going to be a difficult thing for the Mustangs to, to make up is the chemistry that Ferran Hunt brought to that locker room. He, he had so much personality, and so I, I think that's going to be a big loss for them. So who's going to step up and be that good locker room guy? He did. A funny story that I learned from him last year was when they got hit with COVID shutdown, which they did several times, and we'll get to that. He uh, was allowed to go to Soul Cycle, so that's how he spent his, uh, you know, <laughs> right into the beat of the music down in Highland Park. But this was a team that last year, I mean, if they got through that year, they had a COVID shutdown, they were able to start playing again, and then they lost power. That was the one game they were going to be able to play, and then they had another COVID shutdown again. With everything that they went through last year, this has to just be like a <sighs> We can finally play moment, Mike. There's no doubt about it, especially the fact that you have high expectations because all the talent that's coming in, when you've got a normal preseason, taking all that talent and trying to figure out, okay, what works, what doesn't work, who's going to be our chemistry leader, all those things maybe wouldn't have been able to be found out if you would have had a COVID-type season. Another player that we haven't talked about is another transfer, Tristan Clark from Baylor. Tristan Clark was the second option on Baylor's offense last year before he got hurt. Baylor won the national championship. He's an incredibly talented player. They are adding in a lot of talent, local talent, and you get a player like Tristan Clark pairing him up with Zach Nadal. I mean, this, it's, the, it's why they're top four in the conference preseason picked. And the other thing, Moody Coliseum yeah. might be one of the best venues in college basketball, no period. So just to, to know that those fans are going to be back, like yeah. Moody's a great spot. It is, and it's, it's also really cool to see because you did, they did the same thing with football, is that they bring these hometown guys. That's why they have the D now as part of Dallas on their logo. Tim Jankovic joining us now, the head coach of the SMU Mustangs in for his sixth season. Coach, thanks so much for joining us. When we met last year, uh, at the end of last year, have been such an off and on season. I mean, what has it been like to have some normalcy around practice and getting a group with a lot of new faces to get to mold in kind of maybe more normal circumstances? Well, last year was surreal. And, and because last year was surreal, this year is surreal. It's, it's, it's almost surreal <laughs> to be normal. You know, we don't know how to act anymore. And uh, it's been fantastic. You know, it feels so much business as usual like we've been used to for the rest of our lives and it's and it's great and I also heard you talking about Moody Coliseum and giving a plug to how how great a place it is to play and I appreciate that. Well coach we have some questions from the media we're going to let Tom toss it to our first question for you. All right our first question will be from Jason Munns of the Memphis Commercial Appeal. Hey Tim how are you today? Good thanks. Good. Uh, wanted to get your take on the uh, preseason poll. How, how you um, how you view it? How you how you thought it sh it shook out? And then also uh, two part question. Uh, wanted to get your best Larry Brown story. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, the the first question is easy. The first question is um, I don't even know. I don't. Uh, I think. Preseason polls are fantastic for coffee shops and locker room talk and all that, but honestly, I didn't really look at it. I think it's a great way to get people talking about basketball 
in the fall. But beyond that, I don't think anybody even remembers when the conference season starts who was ranked where. So uh, honestly, I don't pay much attention to that. Um, they never seem to be 100% accurate anyway. And uh, so I just, you know, I think they're just fun for now for the fans to talk about. So I think it's good for that. Favorite Larry Brown story? I don't know. There's so many. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know that one. I'll, I'll think of one when I'm done, you know, the one that I want to tell. But, uh, you know, I just really enjoyed working with him. Um, and we had a lot of great times together. And so, you know, I really appreciate that. So I, I don't have a great story, but I will have one the minute I walk out of this room. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Uh, next question will come from Stephen Peters. Hey, Coach. How's it going? Good, thanks. Uh, just talk. It's been alluded to a lot already before you got on about the amount of influx of talent that you brought in um, with the transfer portal as, as well as your freshman coming in. Just who or what has been the most impressive part of preseason camp so far? You know, is there anybody that has stuck, stuck out the most, or has it just been a collective unit that's kind of impressed you so far? Yeah, I, I would mention individually, but so many guys have done so well. Uh, I, I guess what I would say is the, the most surprising things are how unlike freshmen our freshmen have been. They're so mature and so ahead of the game of what you would expect. And I think the other thing that's been uh, such a pleasant surprise is how quickly, you know, wh wh what would be one of your concerns right away with nine new guys is, you know, how fast do we feel like we're becoming a team in any shape or form? And, and it's been just a pleasant surprise to see how fast these guys have bonded and want to be into a team environment and want to be part of a team and want to give of themselves. And they've become very close, uh, closer than most teams, you know, I've been around in, in recent years. So both of those things are really exciting for us. All right, our next question will be from Bubba Rosenbaum of the Sports Objective. Coach, part of getting your team and your program ready for the NCAA tournament and the runs you want to make uh, is playing a challenging non-conference schedule. You go to Oregon, you play Missouri on a neutral court, and then you also uh, have Dayton coming to Moody Coliseum and several other quality games. So talk about your non-league schedule. Yeah, Dayton uh, at New Mexico, UNLV to add to that. Might play Florida State, possibly, uh, depending on the tournament. But... Uh, you know, obviously that was intentional. Sometimes it's very difficult. We've always tried to schedule much like this, but I think sometimes uh, the public doesn't realize that you don't get to choose who you play. It's got to be an agreement, and you ask a lot of people to play, and a lot of times the answer is no, and we've had to be creative in some ways to get the schedule that we do have. But uh, it times up very well. I think we have the, the team that needs to play this schedule, and I think probably if you would look at, I don't know, the last 30 or 40 years, you could argue it's the most challenging preseason schedule we've had here at SMU in years and years. And and uh, it took a lot of work, took some luck. But, uh, you know, we will not be eliminated from the tournament for lack of, of a schedule, that's for sure. And, and including our conference, which I think, to me on paper, it looks like a, a, not just a great year for our league, but but one of the best and and a team that's, uh, and a league that's going to challenge any other league. I, I think it's uh, going to be an incredible year, incredibly competitive. Coach Brooke Weisbrod in the studio, you know, I think you, you hit it right on the head. A challenging schedule is such a key piece of getting you guys in a good position, you know, to get that not only automatic bid, but to get a great seed in the NCAA tournament. And it'll get a chance to have Kendrick Davis really show his skill set. What, in your opinion, makes him not only a player of the year candidate in the American, but maybe on, you know, the national scene? Well, I, th I guess, uh, you know, I would start with he's really talented, of course. Uh, a lot of talented guys out there. Uh, number two, uh, he, he cares so passionately. I mean, he, he cares to the hundredth power. Basketball is life to him. Uh, he's one of the most more competitive, if one of the most competitive people I've been around um, and so he's highly highly driven and and he has some things you just you know some innate confidence innate feel for the game things that you just can't teach but uh, 
Not many guys hungrier on a daily basis than, than Kendrick. Coach, it's something that we've talked about um, as a as a SMU brand in general with the D on your shirt and, and behind you. How much do you feel? I mean, you've been able to get these transfers of people that want to go play in Dallas in their home. How much have you seen that change for you in terms of recruiting in the transfer portal? Well, I think, uh, you know, when we came here 10 years ago, I, I just think it's been a steady increase of, of awareness of SMU. Uh, we love Dallas. I mean, that was one of the big reasons that I, I came to work here. I think Dallas is one of the greatest cities in the world, uh, let alone the country, if not the best. And so it's such an attractive place, whether you're from here or whether it's a destination from somewhere else. I think it's it's one of the great things that we have to offer. And, and uh, it has served us. If you look from the day that we got here, the transfers that we've got in starting, you know, with Nick Moore, uh, you know, starting there. I mean, if you look at the transfers that we've gotten, it's uh, in large part, hopefully just to some hard work by the, our coaching staff, but but also the things that we have to sell university and, and uh, as you mentioned, just the city itself. Coach uh, Michael Donald in the studio here. I really enjoyed watching film on uh, Zurich Phelps, uh, Mr. Basketball of Texas. Uh, you get a chance. Uh, how are those head-to-head -head matchups going in practice with him and Kendrick and the other guards? Uh, you know, he's one of those. I was talking earlier, but one of those freshmen. If if a guy would come in our gym that's got a lot of basketball experience, maybe some coaching or whatever, and you said, "Hey, pick out our freshman." Just you know, you don't know who anybody is, but watch for a while and figure out who the freshmen are. I tell you what, you'd be hard pressed, and 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 it's just. Uh, I'm so impressed with them. It's so difficult to walk into major college from day one in the first few weeks or months or whatever and, and be so far ahead. I think it's a great, great testimony to their, to their families, their parents, their coaches that they played for, and their own character. So they've been great. Zurich is a guy that uh, is so impressive. Uh, I said this earlier, if he, was, if he was a stock, I would buy him. I would buy a lot of him. <laughs> because I think he's got an incredible future ahead of him. He's going to play basketball for a long, long time. His future is so bright, and uh, we're proud and excited to have him here. Coach, you talked about this year being surreal. My final question to you, have you thought about what it's going to be like to be a Moody on November 9th and that feeling of having a full atmosphere there? I have. I, I, I have a lot because it was just, I, I tell you, I can't, I can't even explain how how it felt last year, you know, uh, our first our first road game last year was at Dayton, and uh, I've been to Dayton before when that place is is rocking, and we're there, and there's no one there, and they're pumping in this loud noise, and we got masks on, and it's like it was just like wow, this is this is outer space. So yeah, we we've thought about it a lot. Uh, we look forward to uh, you know our fans getting back, and I know our players. Uh, you know, I, I, they can't even express how much more fun it will be for them. Well, we thank you so much, Coach. November 9th, McNeese State. We're looking forward to watching you play. Thank you very much.